A massive fish kill along 60 miles of the Salt Fork River in northern Oklahoma bears a strong resemblance to another huge fish kill two years ago in southern Oklahoma. From the dam of the Great Salt Plains Lake to the Arkansas River, fish, mussels, and algae are all dead. About the only thing left alive in the Salt Fork are the turtles, and for now, the reason why is a mystery. Beginning June 2nd, paddlefish, flathead, and blue catfish, carp, and drum began turning up dead in huge numbers along portions of the Salt Fork of the Arkansas River. The second fish kill happened on June 16th, just downstream from the first. The kill zone began around Lamont and ran to the confluence of the Chickaskia River. The second kill ran a much shorter distance from Highway 177 to the confluence of the Arkansas. Tim Glazer lives where those two rivers meet and was among the first to discover the kill. We started seeing a few fish floating by, you know, we never thought nothing of it. And then later on in the day, the fish really pooled up and was looked like they were gasping for air coming to the top of the water. A scene very similar to what Patrick Stewart and others observed just after July 4th of 2011 along the Red River. I went there the next morning and those fish were trying to get out of the water and, and dying and running up on the bank. Pictures confirm the same thing happened in the Salt Fork. Big catfish who managed to beach themselves on sandbars, trying to get out of the water they used to call home. Tim Glazer has lived along the river for decades, but has never seen anything like what he saw a few weeks ago. We took our boats and went up the Salt Fork and there was just, the banks were lined with 25, 30, 40 pound fish, spoonbill, a lot of spoonbill, flathead, buffalo, carp. Bill Wentroth is the North Central Regional Fisheries Supervisor for the Department of Wildlife Conservation. He says from the beginning, this fish kill did not fit the usual pattern and there was no lack of oxygen or fresh water. But this is a little different scenario. We've got uh, fresh water coming into it. Both of these kills, recent kills, have been associated with some rainfall, so that's a good thing. It's good that we're getting fresh water in there, but it's not great because something else came in with it. Water samples are being tested now at a lab in the Oklahoma City offices of the Department of Environmental Quality. To see if there's any pesticides related things, if there's any uh, contaminants from oil field or something like that. However, Skylar McElhaney with DEQ says those test results are being delayed because of a drinking water emergency in Okima. We don't yet know whether the two kills are related or whether they are totally separate. We are um, analyzing our samples that we have in-house and we're hoping that that will help us determine a cause. There is no, we haven't been able to find an obvious cause for the fish kill. Whether the two fish kills on the Salt Fork are linked and whether there are any similarities to the fish kill two years ago along the Red River are questions that DEQ still can't answer. We treat every fish kill as a unique situation, so I, I can't really draw any conclusions from the Red River fish kill to relate it to this particular fish kill. In the 2011 Red River fish kill, big catfish and bottom feeders died in huge numbers. Spencer Grace, game warden for Kay County, says that's just what happened in the Salt Fork fish kills this June. Investigating this fish kill um, and the one previous, I mean, it's obvious that What's killing these fish is, is staying low in the water column and, and killing those fish that stay near the bottom of the water, in the bottom of those bigger pools. Ranger Grace also took readings to measure the salt content in the river. It is naturally salty, just like the red, but these readings were off the scale. The salt content is naturally high. Whenever we did, had fish kills last year, the conductivity readings were about half of what they are right now. Gray says at the height of the Salt Fork fish kill, the conductivity rating, a measure of salt levels, was up to 14,000 microsiemens. Normally, the reading is around 4,000. For Tim Glazer, that information is very telling. Northern Oklahoma is booming with new gas and oil development, which also brings injection wells, and near the river, several saltwater disposal wells. It'd just be my opinion, but they are drilling real heavy out west. Just every mile has got a rig standing up on it, and just salt water dumps is my opinion. Glazer says during the fish kill, the water looked different, and when he was on the river during the kill, the water that splashed on his face caused his lips to burn and tasted like metal. The fish were dying, the water had cleared up and kind of turned to tea-colored. 
it, sulfur is usually a muddy color and it's back to its muddy color again. We haven't seen any problem with the fish since. While we were on the salt fork for this story, the only bird we ever saw eating any of the fish was a juvenile bald eagle. That fish turned out to be a fresh kill. Game Warden Gray says while the vultures showed up, they weren't eating the fish. You don't really see a lot of buzzards eating these fish, uh, mainly turtles that have been, been eating on them. Videographer Aaron Bird and I worked our way back from the confluence of the Arkansas and the Salt Fork all the way to the dam at Great Salt Plains Lake. At every point where we could access the river, we searched for aquatic life. But it wasn't until we got all the way to Nash, Oklahoma, that we found fish. They, too, were dying. We counted about a dozen carp and catfish that were dead, including this fish who breathed his last in front of Aaron's camera. We strongly discourage using the water or uh, eating fish from the Salt Fork River. As we searched the Salt Fork for signs of life or evidence of what killed the fish, we made it to the banks of the river just off Highway 74 that's north of the town of Salt Fork. At the water's edge, the bank appeared to be just regular mud until I slipped and looked back at where I had stood. It was obvious that there was something else under the mud. A black, smelly substance appeared as deep as I could go with a stick. The substance was also under the water as a black, oily cloud rose up after dragging that stick across the bottom. At this location, the river includes an old pipeline that has jutted out of the water for some time, the remnants of a railroad bridge, and another large culvert-looking tube that hung off the high bank over the river. What it was for, we could not tell. Using a discarded plastic bottle, I scooped up some of the oily, smelly mess. Probably not the perfect specimen bottle, but it's all we got. Once we were able to get a good look at the substance, it appeared to be crude oil, but it also appeared there was something else mixed in with it. We dropped off a sample of the substance at the Department of Environmental Quality for testing, but because of their backlog of work in the lab, it will probably be a month before they can tell us just what it was we found along the banks of the Salt Fork. When wildlife dies, it dies without a voice, you know, so we rely heavily on the public to to report things. Both the wildlife and environmental quality officials say without help from the public, it's very difficult to find any answers to fish kills and other instances of wildlife or environmental damage. We want to know what caused it. We want to know what caused it so we can figure out how to stop it. Test results on water samples from the fish kill, along with results from the sample ONR turned over to state officials, will take another two weeks to a month to finish. We will have a follow-up report on those findings. If you have any information about the Salt Fork fish kill, you can call Operation Game Thief at 1-800-522-8039. Or to report any environmental damage, contact the Department of Environmental Quality complaint line. That number is one 800 522-0206.